This video addresses the question of who would win a war between the Star Wars Galactic Empire and the Federation in Star Trek. Star Wars is very clear about the sort of story that it is um, in the first trilogy. It's a story about a few people with some support fighting a few other people with some support. The main influence on Star Wars was Flash Gordon. After that, it was probably Westerns. George Lucas makes a lot of claims about how it was based on mythology. I don't think those claims are terribly credible, to be honest. But in any case, certainly it was based on Flash Gordon and Westerns, with or without mythology. And Flash Gordon is the story of really a few people. Flash Gordon, a couple of human companions, a few people that he meets on Mongo who sort of become his allies. Some of those people are rulers and they have a sort of some men supporting them. And then that group fights uh, Ming the Merciless, Ming the Merciless's daughter, who sort of aids Flash sometimes. And then he has some some soldiers as well. But it's basically about a few named people. Now imagine a story about World War II, and the story about World War II is that Churchill and Stalin get together to sneak into Germany and sneak into a German base because they need to rescue Stalin. And on the way, Churchill meets Hitler, and Churchill and Hitler have a sword fight, uh, but they end up rescuing Stalin, and then uh, Eisenhower and Stalin lead a bunch of British airmen in a raid on Germany and uh, Adolf Hitler leads a few German aeroplanes fighting against them and after that battle they destroy a German base and that means that the Allies won World War II. Now obviously that's a stupid story, an unrealistic story, because World War II was not about a few individuals interacting with each other. Churchill never personally interacted with Hitler. Um, Churchill, Stalin and Eisenhower did meet personally once, but fundamentally they didn't do that. They commanded entities which sort of interacted with each other at a lower level. Um, so if you wanted to tell a story about World War II that, that was small, that did have a few small... Uh, uh, excuse me, a small number of characters, and usually you would want to do that because that's the sort of story that people like. You would tell it about one aspect of World War II. You wouldn't tell the story of World War II. You would tell the story of one ship in World War II and probably one ship and one particular battle that it was involved in or one group of commandos and one mission that they go on. And that's one way to get the sort of story that people like, which is that you have a big setting, you tell the story of a small part of that setting and a, and a small number of people in that setting. That's what Star Trek has done. Uh, captain Kirk and the other captains are, they're not the captain of the ship in the Federation. They are one captain of one ship in the Federation. There are hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands or whatever it's meant to be other ships who are off doing other missions. This planet that the Federation is visiting, excuse me, that the Enterprise is visiting this week is not the planet in the setting or it's not one of two or three planets in the setting. It's one of hundreds of thousands of planets or millions of planets or whatever it may be in the setting. But this episode, we're just telling this small story. A few people who are the most important people on the Enterprise will interact with a few people who are the most important people on the planet. And that's the story for this week. And then next week, they're going to go off to another planet. And by implication, there are many, many, many other ships doing other things or perhaps even similar things. Captain Kirk went to Starfleet Academy. Presumably, there was lots of other people in the, in the class that he was in. Presumably, they all went on to be captains as well. Presumably there was another class next year. Presumably there was a class the year before. Presumably all of these people are captains of spaceships and they're all off doing other missions. The Galactic Federation is like a modern state. 
it has a it has a large navy. I don't know if they ever say exactly how large, but it's certainly meant to be. You're certainly meant to think of it as being like the U.S. Navy or the British Navy during the height of the British Empire or something like that, or perhaps even exponentially bigger than that. But it seems to be organised in that very specific way. Whereas Star Wars is more like a Western. It's more like one sheriff and perhaps a few people who help him versus one gang of, you know, bad men or, or it's one group of US cavalry in one fort fighting one band of Native Americans in a, you know, in an older, an older type of Western. Except that in a Western, it's understood that this is one town on a big frontier. This battle is one battle in the wars between white settlers and Indians. This group of settlers is one group of settlers among many. This battle of the Civil War is one battle among many in the Civil War. And in Star Wars, that isn't the case. Princess Leia is the leader of the rebellion. She's not a leader of a rebellion. She's the leader of the rebellion. And she personally takes part in the Battle of Endor, for example. And after the Battle of Endor, that's it for the Empire. The Empire is destroyed. The Empire is basically a single fleet and <clears throat> the partially rebuilt Death Star and, you know, a few a few stormtroopers. Um, once a group of Ewoks, apparently a single tribe of Ewoks and a few rebels defeat them, that's the end of the war. And that's made very clear in the film. It's not the beginning of the end for the Empire or a turning point in the war. No, that's it. That's the end of the war. The rebels have won. Um, so it's more like perhaps the Trojan War where Achilles and Hector are important figures in the sort of governments of their respective sides, but they're also important figures in the battle. They can personally fight and kill each other. And those personal interactions have a big effect on on who wins the war. Um, so to return to the original question, who would win? Well, it would be a modern state, the Federation, versus a single Western town or a single city-state or Flash Gordon and his friends or some other small-scale enterprise. And it, the Federation, therefore, would win by overwhelming numbers. Um, the caveat is that Star Wars very quickly became a bit embarrassed by its small scale, and so they wanted to say, no, 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 the Galactic Empire is a modern state. There are millions of planets and thousands, and each destroyer is miles long, and there's this is really taking place on a big scale. But uh, what they were claiming in supplementary material was obviously not what was happening on the screen.